Hox genes and their role in limb development. In broad terms, the job of the Hox genes is to code for transcription factors that play crucial roles in embryonic development. So when an organism is just starting off as an embryo, in order for it to develop, to develop into a fully grown organism, these genes kind of direct the differentiation of all the different kinds of cells inside the organism. So the transcription factors that the Hox gene creates eventually determines the body plan of the organism by directing each cell inside the embryo towards whether it will become an arm, a leg, an appendage, an antenna, anything. It directs every portion of the organism's body. And here's a vis visual representation of these body plans. So seeing where the genes correspond to which portions of the body they're gonna code for. So you have a series of these Hox genes and they code for different segments. For a little refresher in genetics, what a transcription factor does is it's a protein that's job is to activate a certain gene so it can be transcribed to mRNA and that mRNA will go through the translation process to make a protein. And as you may have saw in the previous image, these Hox genes are typically found in clusters in uh, the chromosomes. So like one after another in a really organized manner, which is interesting to note for these genes as it's not usually seen in other uh, groups of genes. And here's an image to show that clustering. You can see in different organisms, they all kind of share this pattern where the Hox genes are really close to each other and they almost correspond linearly to different segments of the organism's bodies. And Hox genes play a crucial role in this uh, head-to-tail axis bilateral symmetry that you see in a lot of organisms, everything from human beings to spiders. It all originates with this Hox gene coding for organisms to have these symmetrical organized bodies. And in some recent experiments, scientists have been able to manipulate these genes in order to transplant limbs to different areas of organisms' bodies to make some pretty interesting results. For example, here we can see the Antennapedia mutant, which is a fly that they actually switched the order of the antennas and the legs to transplant legs onto where the antennas should be in flies. So it's, it's really interesting to see how big of a role Hox genes play that just switching one gene can have such a dramatic effect. So in further experiments, scientists tested that by deactivating certain Hox genes, they could observe phenotypic results, such as the loss of certain appendages. And by doing this, they could narrow down the individual purpose of each Hox gene and kind of determine the specific outcome of the activation. Here we can see a real life example on the activation or deactivation of certain Hox genes. And in this case, it's effect is on the number of finger digits, and these digits can either increase or decrease depending on which Hox genes were activated or deactivated. These types of experiments were a little more difficult for testing on mammals rather than insects, because for mammals, they have multiple sets of Hox genes that can cover up when one of the Hox genes has been deactivated, unlike in insects where they only have one set, so the phenotypic results are obvious because there is no gene to cover it up. So. In mammals, it was not as easy to narrow down the specific function of certain Hox genes. Cell communication and signaling response. Into a bit more of the specifics behind the Hox genes, the transcription factors that they code for are called homeodomain containing transcription factors. And these are the ones that turn on certain genes to be transcribed to mRNA to accomplish the goal of Hox genes. And here's a representation of those homeodomain transcription factors and how they interact with the DNA to turn on certain genes that will be transcribed to mRNA. And this is, this is what it looks like in the early process. And then for translation and the creation of, pro of proteins, the mRNA travels out of the nucleus and goes to a ribosome where it codes for specific amino acids with the uh, nitrogen bases in it. And these amino acids combine to form a protein. After this, the protein can travel out of the cell into the extracellular space, and it travels to stem cells, which is which are like the beta cells that the Hox genes kind of control and differentiate. And he here's just a little graphic showing the life cycle of a stem cell. It can either differentiate and turn into a mature cell, which is the job of the Hox gene, or it can self-renew and uh, maintain its stem cell status. So when this protein has managed to bind with the stem cell that it was targeting, a cascade reaction occurs and we see this single transduction pathway play out. And as we've seen with other signaling molecules, there's always an end result for these single transduction pathways. And with Hox proteins, the end result is cell differentiation. 
And one area that scientists still are researching on is actually the process by which these ligand proteins know which stem cells to connect to and where to where how many they need to differentiate to form all the appendages that organisms have. So this is just an area of research. And Hox genes aren't just important in embryos, but they're also important in adults for differentiating hematopoietic cells and uh, continuing differentiation for all the future needs that adults may have in regrowing cells to cover up injuries, damage, and uh, different sorts of that nature. Here you can see all the variety that these hematopoietic cells have in transforming to different kinds of cells that any adult may need. Another way Hox genes are crucial for cell signaling is their responsibility in the expression of cadherins and integrins, which are two molecules that are on the outsides of cells and uh, are really important for cell adhesion. And so this cell to cell adhesion is imperative for these uh, interactions and signaling between cells, both paracrine when the cells are touching because of the adhesion, but also the signaling that takes place in the cell extracellular matrix and the, the endocrine signaling that occurs there. And here's just a recap of the three kinds of signaling. Neural, which takes place through uh, nerves and neurons. Paracrine, which takes place through cell-to-cell -cell contact. And endocrine, which takes place through the extracellular matrix. And finally, one, one kind of uh, ambitious research project for Hox genes is determining their role in the cell cycle. And this isn't fully understood yet, but through uh, deactivation and activation of Hox genes, Scientists have noticed a, an impact on the cell cycle, so this remains an area of future study.